the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Good morning. Today we celebrate Labor Day, and you know we have to be grateful for those who provide all the services, you included, right? And so that indeed, uh, with our work, we may be able to build each other. We ask that from God. And to start our celebration, let us ask for pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words. <coughs> through my fault, through my fault, to my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask a blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our senses of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, about those who have fallen asleep, so that you may not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose, so too will God, through Jesus, bring with him those who have fallen asleep. Indeed, we tell you this on the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will surely not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself, with a word of command, with the voice of an archangel and the trumpet of God, will come down from heaven and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Thus, we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, console one another with these words. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord comes to judge the earth. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Lord comes to judge the earth. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught but the Lord made the heavens. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Let the sea and what fills it resound. Let the plains be joyful and all that is in them. Then shall all the trees of the forest exult. The Lord comes to judge the earth. Before the Lord, for he comes, for he comes to rule the earth. He shall rule the world with justice and the peoples with his constancy. 
the Lord comes to judge the earth. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, he handed it back to the attendant and sat down and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today, this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, it is not the son of Joseph? He said to them, surely you will quote me this proverb, physician, cure yourself and say, do here in your native place the things that we have heard were done in Capernaum. And he says, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. In this, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was, known, it was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow of Zarephtha in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet, none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were all filled with fury. They rose up drove him out of the town and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Today we hear how Jesus is telling his hearers, the people in the synagogue, how he embodies the fulfillment of what has been written, a prophecy. And of course, as they hear how nicely he preaches, everybody is happy. But I wonder uh, if we are not more or less the same as those hearers of Jesus. Because I'm sure that when you hear uh, one of the priests who preach according to what you like, you are pretty happy, right? But if a priest says something you don't like, the first thing probably that comes to your mind is that priest, right? And here, it is not a matter of either or. Because sometimes we have to learn that yes, uh, you know, Priests can be pretty good preachers, and priests sometimes will say things that are not proper. Nevertheless, are we listening to the invitation of God? You know, because even if someone is pretty bad in his preaching, sometimes we can find something good. But we have to be always dedicating time to try to understand what is going on. Okay? And the people of uh, the native place of Jesus, they do not give time to anything. 
as soon as they hear, you know, Jesus telling them, you know, you are supposed to understand these things, but you don't want to hear it, then they get upset and want to throw him out. You know, what do you do? Not only with your priest, but with your relatives, your family. When you have a discussion, a misunderstanding, do you sit down and try to clarify it? Or not even talking to people, but rather sit down, cool, and think through and say, does it make sense or not? Or do you let yourself be moved bad by your emotions? I think that pretty often we just react to things that are coming instead of sitting down and cooling down, you know. And if we tie it up to the first reading, you know, uh, the writer is telling the people, please don't be like those pagans who don't understand death, right? Who get frightened because of death. Rather, remember that it is always hope and we hope for a better life. I mean, a few days ago I was with some of my friends and they were celebrating the 22nd anniversary of marriage and I don't know how we enter into the topic of death. And the husband right away said, like, uh -uh, I don't want to hear anything about it, you know. And the wife said, I don't care if I have to die today, I will just ask 30 seconds from God so that I can repent. And I said, that's pretty cool, you know. But then I told both of them, you know, if I were to be called right here, right now, let it be. And it's not that I'm holy, don't worry about it, okay? Nevertheless, I was telling them, I am convinced that I am doing what I'm supposed to do. And hopefully, God in his mercy will have compassion of me. Because I was sharing with them, you know, uh, in my years as a priest, it's pretty nice to go and tend to those who are in the process of dying and give the anointing of the sick and talk to them. And I remember a, a friend of mine from Racine and uh, they call me and say, hey, she wants to see you. And I say, okay, let's, let me go. And she was already in hospice. And I sit down and talk to her, you know. I say, like, you know, I'm ready to meet my creator. I'm happy with what I have. And I'm ready to go. And we have a conversation of like an hour, okay. Then I did the anointing of the sick, have communion. And she says, well, see you next life. And I say, hopefully, you pray for me because I need us. Okay? I tell you, those are the encounters where you can f see the hope of the resurrection, even when you are facing death. And she died a couple of days later, you know. So anxiety doesn't take over you. You know, you don't react to what is coming, but you are able to say, this is it, I get it, or I don't get it, but help me, Lord. You know, when we dedicate time, not only to understand with our heads, but to understand with our hearts, and that includes God, then it's much easier for us to give an answer which is appropriate. It doesn't come from the gut. Okay? And then we are able to say what is the goodness out of it. You know, because Jesus says in the gospel, right, you may say, uh, okay, we know who you are, do you really? Do you really understand what is going on inside of you? You know. So we ask the Lord to grant us the desire 
to spend time with ourselves, to spend time with him. And that instead of reacting to things, we may be able to take action, to take time, to think through, and to see what is the best possibility. Please all rise. And let us offer to God our petitions and our needs. That God, may, that God may call all members of the church to lives of holiness and service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. That the words of Jesus Christ, who is the fulfillment of all God's promises, may bring light and life to every corner of the world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that those who experience rejection or failure may find hope and strength in the gospel message, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the members of this assembly may be unified in our love for God and for one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died may be joyously welcomed to the heavenly banquet, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, holy marriage, permanent diaconate, and single life, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in public office, that they may be inspired by the Holy Spirit to serve and protect all life, from conception to natural death, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those remembered in our prayer petition thank you book, that through God's everlasting love, they will receive the help they, they need, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. And for the intention of this mass, for the repose of the soul of Kathy Kaczynski, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear prayer. our prayer. God, Father of mercy, is here this our prayers and those that we have kept in our hearts to grant them according to your will. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power to Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
to Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith, and his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. May holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them that you do fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willing into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be put out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, fire, cross, and resurrection. You have said. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church has spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all of your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we are to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold he who takes away the sins of the world, Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter on the Lord, but only say the word in my sins.
Let us pray. Renew by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and steer us to serve you in our neighbor, to Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him with humbly pray. And O thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass ascended. Let us go in the peace of Christ.